a temporary basin that was on the site, um, flock blocks to take the silt out of the water and have controlled the silt since that large storm. Um, there was a release into the wetlands of silt and that storm, that single storm event. Since then, I don't believe we've had any more releases. Um, since that time, we have filled in the where where the basin is going, um, the final basin, which is where we had a temporary basin to try to control the water coming from the intermittent stream. Um, we have that filled in. We have now diverted the intermittent stream through um, a detention basin liner, which is a, a thick plastic liner that comes down to a pipe, through the pipe, and out through another se section of the um, basin liner and down into the area of the original intermittent stream that is going to flow underneath the open box culvert when that is installed. Um, so now we're, we have totally separated any clean water on the site from any dirty water on the site. Um, since that time, that basin's been filled in. There's, I don't know, 15 rolls of, we've used 15 rolls of 15 foot wide by 500 feet long rolls of filter fabric. The site, we've used 10,000 tons of crutched stone already on the site. Pretty much all the dirt that was on the site has been removed and replaced with crushed stone. Um, the water coming out of the area that, that does collect the water from the site is perfectly clear now. There's no silt in it. There's nothing in it. Um, the majority of the water from the upper site that comes down the stream now is totally diverted without ever hitting any soil. So there's no way for silt to get in that. And it goes directly into the original uh, stream channel and into the wetlands. Um, we submitted last week a, um, a pretty simple uh, restoration of the lower wetland. Um, if if people would have came on the site walk today, they would have saw that there is not no silt anywhere, but where the water has collected now in three small pools. The leaves on the outside of that up to the edge of the water is perfectly clear. Um, I do have some pictures. Oh, she has some pictures of it. So that's <laughs> this is from this morning. Yeah, this is uh this is from this afternoon. I took pictures. So that's the stream now that comes down through the um basin and into the pipe and. If you can go go to the next one, maybe then I don't think they're in order. That's where it comes down the hill. Um, OK, and that's so that's where it empties now into the area that was um, staked and not disturbed. So we have the pipe that enters into a um, piece of detention um, basin liner that comes down and it. If you go to the next one, I think there's a better picture of that uh, one more. Yeah, and that now it empties into an area of filter fabric with a silt fence just to slow it, slow the water down, but that's all perfectly clean water. The only reason the silt fence is across the end there is to slow the speed of the water. And the reason there's filter fabric there is so when the water comes out of the chute from the pipe, it doesn't erode. So, and but it still allows the water to soak into the ground into that area. Um, so. I don't suspect we're going to have any more problem with silt on the site. Um, this was a section up top. We had a tree fall in the windstorm last week across the silt fence on top. We cut the tree off and I replaced about a section of about 30 feet of silt fence with wattles that got knocked out over and crushed from the tree. You can see a part of the tree in the back there. So we did that this afternoon after our site walk that we had this morning. I had already I had already saw it before Isabella got there and already had guys lined up to come in the afternoon to fix it. Um, I have no problem with the board sending out the restoration of the wetland for um, for review, for peer review. I do have a serious problem with any uh, peer review of our drainage since it's already been peer reviewed twice. Um, I There's no change to any of the plans that were submitted. There's no change to the notice of intent. Um, we haven't had another silt release. I don't, I'm kind of being, I'm kind of feeling like I'm getting singled out here during the big storm event. I know there was three, four, five other contractors in here and I'm the only one I see coming back every week. Um, and I think our site is in excellent shape. Um, I spoke, uh, actually Adam spoke with um, DEP. Um, he spoke to the, not the circuit rider, but whoever was above that. And she spoke to the circuit rider, Gary Dumaine, who that was on the site. 
And she said he had, he didn't see any problems with the site. Um, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm a little confused why I'm here every single week for a site that's in really good shape. Can I ask a question? OK, well. Um, I'll try to answer his question. Yeah. OK, so yes, you speak to the chair. I, I guess <laughs> the applicant doesn't need to be here every right. week that but every week we're having an inspection and that he is more than welcome to attend as we discuss this but we are still talking uh the good news is you've got the site under control and i would suggest that's because there's no topsoil upstream of it because it's already been taken care of uh move one specific question is there must have been some topsoil on the site and or probably not much, but up on top of the hill. Is there a pile of soil anywhere? Yes, there is a pile of soil up there. That area is totally surrounded with sill fence. Okay. Um, most of that upper section is bare ledge. There's there's big outcrops of bare ledge up there. Um, I've already, we've already lined, so the piles now that we're crushing are getting smaller. Um, I've already lined up the hydro cedar for the third week of March. Um, He'll come out and spray seed, a heavy duty tackifier um, to hold the soil in place while to give the time for the number one, the temperature to warm up for the seed to germinate because that's early. Um, but we want to get we want to get the tackifier on there. So once the piles are gone, that that's all stabilized. He's also going to spray the top of the ledge cuts where there's soil that comes over the ledge cuts to to um, take care of that. Um, I, I do realize that I submitted a construction sequence. It was more of a timeline. It was all pretty basic stuff. There's nothing experimental about it. It's all standard construction practices. Um, there's a more detailed construction sequence that got filed with the original order that the board requested when I came in for the original order on the on the box covered itself. So you already have a more detailed um, construction sequence for the box covered. Um, I just, I, I don't know what else I can do. Mr. Chair. Okay. Yep. Uh, two things, because you've got it under control and you've, that, that, that's great. Uh, my, I'll, I'll just have two comments with one comment. Well, one, you said it all started December 17th and I'm assuming it was a wet summer and it got away from you because there was no settling basin and so, I, I don't need to go there right now, but to your larger point is why you are here and we're not picking on you versus other people is in my mind. If you could assure me that the site that. Fed the drainage study included the top of the hill. I would be less likely to push for a review of the drainage. Um, but, so you know, I will no, okay. but let me finish. Not only that area for the drainage, the change of the curve number when you cut down trees and leave it as exposed ledge. So how is that going to impact going forward. So if you could assure me that that was all taken into consideration and then the notice of intent does not show any work to be done upstream. You show a, a road but there's no uh, comment on it and then it cuts off at the edge of the plan and you have said that at every meeting uh, bef uh, before that you had uh, told us that what was going up on top of that hill, I would say that is not true. I did not attend all the planning board meetings. I only attended one. I never heard of a uh, talk uh, for any site work up on top of the hill that that was a temporary, temporary hall route. So uh, I'll rest it at that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, any other commissioners? And Leah, what do you have a question? Uh, can I reply to that? I want to okay. see, see if get get the questions all lined up and then bundle them together instead of just going back and forth a lot. Sure. I just have a clarification. Yeah. Um John said that the silt has been stopped, but I just want to clarify because I feel like in our last meeting you were saying something about the flock blocks hadn't stopped some of the silt. 
not at the last meeting. That would have been the meeting after the big rainstorm when we had the no, big was, snow. I'm pretty event. sure I asked you how the flock blocks were working, and you said we had a little issue with them where some silt was getting through. I, I don't believe that was at the no, last meeting. No, what I meeting. heard is that the flock blocks were successfully capturing silk and sinking it down. Yeah, but they had to be replaced because they do. Well, they, eventually they, they do dissolve, but it's like six yeah, months. Last, last meeting, you said there was clear water coming out, which meant the flock blocks were working. Okay. Um, so the flock blocks now, there's only flock blocks in one. That's all been changed. The commission, if members would have been out there this morning, they would have seen that. Um, so now all any water coming off of the site is going into where the detention basin's going and it flows through, I don't know, 35, 36 layers of filter fabric. So there's no more plunge pools. There's one plunge pool there just to catch some of the um, bottom water that comes just off the, the slope directly next to it. But other than that, all the flow now is going into where the final detention basin's going through filter fabric. You can see where it comes out. Um, over near where the channel is, it, it was perfectly clear. I actually have a picture of it on my phone that I didn't send. So all the um, block, Isabella. So the flock blocks, there's less of them now? Yeah, so there's only flock blocks in the plunge pools. So there's really no more open water on the site. Because where they were, you've done. Yeah, we've struck. So that's right where the road's like, going. So we've okay. started to fill that area in, but we have totally changed the the water pattern that it doesn't go there anymore. So now it comes down. It all goes to where that basin is going to the final basin is going to go. And there's, there's about eight feet of crushed down there. John, is the um, is the area where the garage doors are? Is that area all done now? I know so that's filling it with stone. And yeah, that no, that's just filled with stone right now. So that's where the underground basin goes. And that's where excuse me, we're waiting for structures for catch basins and all that. So that but that's where the the drainage is going to go. That's what we're doing this all for. And then the crossing. And then that will come up even higher than it is. Well, it's going to be level pretty much with the um, with the floor in the garage. Yeah, there. So that's where that's coming. And we're we're there now. We, we'll actually remove some of that to put the okay, so you'll drainage. Dig down, we'll dig drain. down. So now we can. So we're not digging in ledge. Now we're digging in just crushed stone yep. to put that all, all the drainage system. in. Um, the site isn't, if you guys would have came today, the site is in really good shape. And even the wetlands now that the water's receded, because every time you get water in that, I know it looked like it was getting silt all the time, but every time you get water in that bottom, it just, it, yep. the water is gray because it, it stirs up the silt that's already there. But we're not getting any releases now from the site. You know, we're supposed to get rain tomorrow. You might yeah. stop up there tomorrow. I do not. Yeah, I, I wish I had gone there today. I like. I uh, would be, you know, I would just if you could call me and I'll meet you there, or if you have a time, I'll meet you down there and we'll walk the site. Okay, per, you know, I mean, like I, I'm. Whenever it starts raining, I, I would. Uh, you want to do nine thirty tomorrow or something, or you want to give me a buzz? You can yeah, get, I mean, I got your number. You got my number. Okay. Your call. Yes, give me a call. I'll meet you down there and we'll walk it. Um, like, I, I honestly feel like that. I mean, we have a really good contractor out there. We, we hired Gene Barnett Cover Technologies because he does so much work for DEP on uh, landfill closures. And he's he's out of his mind because he's done everything that he can do. And he says, you're going again? I go, yep, I'm going again. So he goes, he's just, he's really out of his mind because he knows what he's doing and he's been doing the right things. I mean, we it's Every I talked to I talked to a circuit rider also about that storm. And every, she said every site in the state had problems. It's not like limited to just us. And any other questions about that? You can start working through the process list. Okay. Uh, the first one I wanted to get a follow up and an answer to one of the questions that Peter raised. When you went before the planning board and they did a stormwater evaluation. Did that evaluation include a notice that you were planning on cutting the trees at the very top of the hill? Okay, so the trees at the top of the hill was were already cut. We already went in front of DEP for that. Um, we had to let just the area within the 100 foot buffer because we went about 10 feet into the 100 foot buffer grow back. The other section is out of the 100 foot buffer and Right, you guys not necessarily talking about whether it's in the buffer. Peter expressed a concern that 
there would be excess stormwater flowing. There's well, there's not. The stormwater analysis from 2019 was based off of, that was before you clear cut it. So the evaluations of the two year, 10 year, 100 year flood no, was before that. that. Because when I came in front of the board, we had already gotten in trouble up there and got a cease and desist and went through, we had already cut the top section. We didn't cut, the, we didn't cut any of the trees up at the top for this project. Not for this project, for the project that came before the board in 2019. This project was 2022 after the DEP cease and desist. The trees were cut because of that. The trees were cut for that cease and desist. John, yes. do you know when a date when they were cut? Because when I went up there and we walked around and saw where you diverted the stream, that's where you got into trouble, right? Yeah. And I didn't see any work up on top of the hill because you hadn't blasted that yet. So you're telling me that that you had done all that cutting? Yes. Well, how many years ago? The same time that we got in trouble for the stream, the tree cutter was up there cutting the front part. That was 2021 you got in trouble for the stream. Or after. No, you're saying at the same time. Yeah, so when you walked that site, that was cut up there. OK, well, but that, that was 2021 I, was when the DEP took over for the stream. I, I, I will repeat my question. When the planning board did their stormwater evaluation, what year was that? And was I, that I don't before? know. She had 19. Better than and so I, I, and so was that before or after trees were cut? Were the trees cut in 2019, 2020, 2021? I, I couldn't say off the okay. top of my I, I'll look into it, though, well, for the board. I, I, this this is something. So the planning board plans have all the sub catch catchments of where yes. the stormwater is going off, and it has the four different sub catchments of the upland site. And so there's some going down to the bordering vegetated wetland in the upland area, and then there's other parts that come down the hill into the bordering wetland on the other okay. side. So there's four catchment basins, and those, from my analysis of the 2019 plans with the stormwater analysis and the SWIP, construction sequence and everything that came through in 2020, 2019, that's where the stormwater analysis calculations are. And so if in 2021, if that's when DEP came for the stream and that's when you clear cut, that is after the plans that came for 2019. Okay. So if you're still we'll basing, if you're basing the size of the temporary basin, or you're basing the volume and the amount of the two 10 hundred year floods, those calculations are off of something looking at the upland site as having trees. So, so when you do drainage calcs, the only drainage calcs that are taken into effect are the final impervious for the size of the base. No, there's a pre and post analysis. Well, there's a pre and post that we have to meet. So it's still impervious up at the top of the hill. It's temporary disturbance that we're going to re respray. So pre and post, that doesn't affect pre and post because it's a temporary disturbance that where there's soil, there's still going to be soil and where there's not. Okay. But the difference, I, John, is where there's trees. Trees drink up to 300 gallons of water a day in the summer. I know. But does. That section doesn't run. It's not like that runs down the hill to where the okay. catch basin. That I, goes to the upper oh, wetland. This is I know eventually it gets there. Okay, Susan, we have so uh, yeah, I heard you mention we're impervious up yeah. there. No, yeah, so the, the only that? impervious is where we're going to put the parking lot. Everything up there is staying dirt and rock. We're, uh, we're going to hydro seed it and it's going to grow back and then it's going to grow back until we do a project up there. OK, I'm I'm I hearing I'm like hearing but my my interpretation of this is that there is sufficient ambiguity that this is something that a peer review would help to nail down. They would work with your team to say exactly what the timeline was and they would be able to come back after doing the research to say, yep, the stormwater calculations included the trees being cut down or they would be able to say, nope, it didn't work that way and we would be able to work with you on an update for that. Adam, Adam has his hand up on this. Okay, yep. Chair Homo, good evening. My Hello. name is Adam Gatsky. Can you hear me, sir? Yes. Uh, thank you. And I don't don't mean to interrupt. I'm here more as an observer, but I just want to follow this. Is the commission attempting to extend its jurisdiction beyond the buffer zone to an upland area in this conversation? We are looking to see whether uh, a peer review would be including the upland area because during the rain events over the summer, 
and in December, whether there was a lot of rain, storm water flowing down from that into uh, the protected areas. Yes, sir. I, I don't think there's any evidence that any soils from the upland area contributed to this problem. The problem was within your jurisdiction. So I just ask the commission to be very sensitive about attempting to extend its jurisdiction beyond what is permitted uh, in this context. Okay, so that would depend on what the stormwater, what the evaluation of the stormwater came in and uh, both of the uh, the RFQs that we have do mention that they would be looking at stormwater calculations and a stormwater yes, checks. I just remind the commission we have a valid final order of uh, conditions here. So as as uh, Mr. Nana was saying that I don't think there's a willingness on the part of the applicant uh, to pay for a stormwater review based upon some allegation of some activity outside of the Conservation Commission's jurisdiction that may affect the site. Okay. Well, the 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 SWIP is under we are part of the stormwater in the order conditions is monitoring the SWIP and the SWIP is based off of stormwater calculations from 2019. Uh, the commission doesn't have independent jurisdiction to monitor the SWIP. Um, that's through the EPA. That's a separate permitting process. Your jurisdiction is limited by the State Wetlands Protection Act and your local bylaw. EPA would know. Do you want to get them? Do you want to call them? Well, uh, well uh, just a response. So, so, so just to, with, to answer that question, I, and, and to be yeah, quite honest, I did speak with Rebecca Tobin, who's regional counsel for DEP. And the only reason that DEP was looking at this is because they were informed, apparently uh, inaccurately, uh, that there had been unauthorized project changes uh, when DEP realized that this was simply a, a, a function, a, a compliance issue as a function of a, uh, an extraordinary rainstorm. Um, they reviewed it and they found no, uh, no, no concerns from their part. Again, it's perfectly appropriate for the commission to uh, require that we restore the wetlands. We own that problem, and it's perfectly appropriate if you think it necessary to have the restoration plan peer reviewed. Uh, but I respectfully suggest the commission doesn't have jurisdiction to reopen the project which has been approved. I will push back and say that there was work done over the summer that inadequate notification was made to the CONCOM about changes that were in the initial order of conditions. I believe that those issues were resolved, but I'll defer to Mr. Nanar because I don't know those facts. Um, I, I don't know what changes over the summer and I notified the commission at the start of the project by email. I also notified again if anybody wanted to walk the site once the silt fence was in place, and I got no response. Okay. And when was that? That was back in probably June, June 15th, okay. June 17th. I will resend the email. So. Okay. Well, we'll leave that. Mr. Chair, I just might push a little bit. Okay. That we've had in the past where soil has gotten into a wetland. That kicks in the jurisdiction. Where is that soil coming from? Now, if you can tell me that soil didn't come from off the top of the hill, when the top of the hill is in the drainage area, and so where which soil that was, uh, okay. that, I'll just leave it at that. Okay. Yeah, I, I can comfortably say that there is an there's a break point on the top of the hill that all the drainage either sits in a bowl up there or heads to the upper wetland. It doesn't run down the site down. So the areas that were, were in the drainage study is the road areas and the side slopes. That does go down to the bottom, but the area on the top does not flow just naturally down the road. It goes the other direction to the right, to the upper wetland that has absolutely no silt in it. There's no silt past any of the silt fence up there. Um, so to say it was coming from there, where it was coming from is where we stopped the stream of the, of the stream bed that we created. It was eroding. The water was just running down the hill, and that's where it was eroding from. Wasn't it coming down point. the west side of the Hall Road? 
And what's upstream of the west side of the Hall Road? The so the Hall Road was the only way for water and erosion to get into that west side of the Hall Road, which caused a problem in the downstream crossing. In my opinion, it was upstream that that big hill that you cut into. And what's at the top of the hill? It's now flat. I'm not quite sure what the original grade was. The only other point, and this is if we ever, if whoever gets reviewing the drainage plan, they show the roof drainage from that big building all going east. Well, you've got, I guess, the roof leaders coming out of the building. I don't know what they are. The big pipes uh, suggest to me that that the roof, at least part of it, uh, drains the other way. But that's not even in the scope of this project. No, but it would be in the drainage and figuring out uh, how much drainage you need to handle the, the various storms. So we need to figure out the drainage to handle the final impervious pre and post. And that has been done. Yep. One question. Was the top of the hill in the original site plan review? Or was that in, in addition to and after to the original site plan review? So, so the top of the hill is a place outside of the hundred foot buffer for us to work our material. Right. We I have to have a simple plan. I know. I, I, I informed the board that we would be handling our material at the top of the hill. That's why the hall road would go around so we could handle the material there, load it on trucks, and take it down. I, I know I informed the board. I informed the planning board, and I'm almost 100% sure I said that during the conservation meeting. It's just a question to ask. Yeah. The planning board so. Itself. So all road is the that's a temporary road. disturbance. We're not going to create any impervious area up there. So it's just while we're handling our material, it's our property and it's outside the hundred foot buffer, and we need to handle the material somewhere. We have we did ten thousand tons of crushed stone on the site already. How are we going to handle that if we don't have some place to stockpile what we're chipping out and and piling, and then handle it and then bring it down clean? It it it. It's absolutely ridiculous to think that we can do a project and not have some place to to hold our material and work. Like it was all ledge. There's no place that was that we could put stuff down the bottom of the site. We were working there chipping out the ledge. The whole site was ledge. It it's a it's a, an area that was cleared. Yeah, it was cleared wrong, but we didn't get in trouble for the clear in the area outside of the hundred foot buffer. We can cut trees outside of the hundred foot buffer. We got in trouble because there was about 10 feet that we went that the tree clearer. It wasn't it wasn't us personally. The tree clearer went like 10 feet in some sections um, into the buffer. We came in front of the board with a plan conservation commission that sh that we had a survey go out, locate the tree line. We agreed that we wouldn't disturb anything in the buffer in the future. We haven't. And we've the trees were cut up there, whether they were cut, you know, so we got in trouble for that 10 foot area that we cut in the buffer. We did not get in trouble for cutting the trees. It's our property and we can cut trees on our property. Mm -hmm. um, so so you guys are trying to regulate an area that's outside of the buffer. Plus, it doesn't go. That area doesn't slope down the road. So the side slopes and the road slope down the temporary road, and that was all all figured into the drainage strategy. The top of the site doesn't do that. It goes to the upper wetland. There's no silt coming off of that into the upper wetland anywhere. I just asked a simple. Yeah, question. and I, oh, I know. I'm trying to explain. <laughs> I'm trying. I mean, I'm. It, it it it's aggravating to me that the site is in such good shape, and yet I'm here every single. Time. I'm just starting to get frustrated. You can understand that. Hey, um, your input. Well, it's it. I'm just shortly. It's it's not that you cleared the trees. I I I know you can clear the trees. You can dig outside the hundred foot buffer, and I know we don't have jurisdiction up there, but we have jurisdiction of all areas that drain into a resource areas. So the drainage going into the BBW, going into the intermittent stream, and then going into the area Lake Nitmuck makes this an important site. And so having a peer review, making sure that the erosion controls along the hundred along the buffer that we do have jurisdiction over is important because Lake Nipmuc is one of Menden's most important resources. And so having the peer review to make sure that going forward, everything is calculated appropriately and we are prepared for another five inch storm and making sure that there is no more sediment coming down from the top of the hill to have an issue like this happen again. I know the site's in, 
in good condition now, but it's raining tomorrow. What's it going to look like? Okay. It, should, it should look absolutely fine because we are not taking the water from the top anymore and mixing it with dirty soil in the bottom. It's all clean water now going down there. Okay. Um, one of the things that I did not see in the two documents was the, we are now getting the SWIP reports and you're reviewing them. Do you feel that you have the knowledge to understand the SWIP reports and make recommendations or do you feel that a peer review should be done at the SWIP reports to help give us input on that? I don't, I don't, the SWIP report is just an inspection form to update us. I'm not, it's not my responsibility to give recommendations on them. Okay. And, and the regs are changing right now. Yes, but they're grandfathered in under the existing ones for at, at least half a year until. I know, I went to a seminar, they're not. They want to. Well, it's not what I heard at the last workshop. Yep. So every time a SWIP report has been issued, I've been out there within two days to do any recommendations that the SWIP okay. reports have. Anytime Isabella, Carl, anybody on the board has said anything about the site, we've gone out and fixed whatever in the best possible way that we know how. We fixed everything on the site the, as soon as we've had a problem. Um, I, okay, so um, and let me just close out another thing that we have on the agenda. Uh, at your site walk today, did you see anything that needed to be remediated based on the last SWIP report, or is the site in good shape? No, it's fine. It's not. You know, this their clean water is coming through the intermittent stream that's now wrapped in filter fabric. Okay, so you're confirming what would he presented at the beginning. Okay, so um, I think we can now transition to discussing one other thing on my head. Uh, the existing enforcement order, is that still, uh, do, you, do you have any recommendations for modifying that or is the one that has been issued sufficient? No, that stands. Okay, so now we're going to transition to talking about uh, review proposals for peer review. Uh, we have strong presentation from applicants representative and council that they feel that having a peer review evaluating the stormwater calculations is uh, not jurisdictional for us and would be more suited for the planning board, I imagine. Uh, uh, we have strong presentation from applicants representative and council that they feel that having a peer review evaluating the stormwater calculations is uh, not jurisdictional for us and would be more suited for the planning board, I imagine. Uh, are you, do you have pushback against, uh, you, you mentioned that you are okay with having a peer review with the upcoming restoration plans. Oh, absolutely, I have okay. no problem. Um, and I have no problem paying for that. Right. Okay. Um, so I'd like to have people on the commission directly say whether they wish to have a peer evaluation of the stormwater despite the pushback or whether we would uh, agree not to have that in, in, in what we would have a peer review done. So go around. I, I want to get people's opinions before we call a vote on it. I'll start yep. with, with the extra work with the amount of water that may or may not be coming down from the top. With the fact that there was already uh, restoration needs. In my opinion, it's not a bad idea, which is not a bad idea, which means I think a peer review is a good idea. Well, we're going to have a peer review at least for the restoration work to be done in the future. The question is whether the, the, the original proposal we sent out that is in front of you says the peer review will evaluate the submitted stormwater calculations and designs for compliance with the stormwater standards. We're being asked to remove that as being not jurisdictional, instead more appropriate for a planning board review. So do you feel that we should continue to have a stormwater review in our peer in, in our the peer review we request, or should it be removed? So that's that's 
that's what I'm trying to get people's uh, opinions on and a discussion on before I call for a vote on it. OK, so if our job is to protect the wetlands and we're not sure if things are buttoned up or where are some of the silt is coming from, I don't well, at the moment there's no silt coming. From well, <laughs> where it could come from. <laughs> um, I don't have the expertise to make that decision. I would I need somebody to tell me if everything looks OK. OK, and my thought on that is is that if. There's more water coming down than was originally anticipated, mm -hmm. which means whether it be through extra storms, bigger storms or more area disturbed, then it should be reviewed. Right, OK, yeah, but it, it, then it's a question of whether it's reviewed by us or not. OK, Peter, I guess I strongly support Bob stating because it's a simple, simple question was, was that area part of the site? If it if it yeah, was part point. of the site, OK, but I'm alleging, I guess that it wasn't part, part of the site that we reviewed. So now I don't know what to do with a notice of intent when the site has grown. So yes, we gave them the, the permission to do this work, but more work depending on how you define the site. So the reviewer should certainly have the ability to look at the whole site from a bigger perspective. I guess we can get into uh, legal authority, whether it's the planning board or how do you how do you change something if you find something wrong in the it, sorry, uh, we made a mistake and that this this water goes this way doesn't. It's been approved and gone to construction. So how can you fix it? I, I don't know how, how that works. Okay. Uh, and Susan? Yeah, um, none of us are uh, stormwater type engineers, really. So I don't know how we could evaluate. Well, what I'm asking for your the the the, the opinion on is so whether, that was, so that would be whether we would include the stormwater, even though there's a council is saying that it's not jurisdictional for us and instead should be referred probably to the planning board. I I, I disagree with the non jurisdictional because when you remove the trees, you change the hydrology. Yeah, I agree with Susan and the stormwater report was submitted to with the notice of intent. So how would it not be our jurisdiction to review the stormwater coming off the site? We're in charge of setting up the erosion controls. We have to manage the stormwater getting into the bordering vegetated wetland. Yep. I believe you are jurisdictional of the stormwater within the 100 foot buffer. Well, we're also so jurisdictional the, with the, the the tension basin that's in within the buffer, the catch basins that are within the buffer, but not without. Not well, that without. Let, let me give the example of 34 Cape Road, which is one of the other places that had difficulty. Stormwater uh, was going into uh, the, the, the creek there from way upstream from the 100 foot buffer. And because the site was impacting, they ended up having to put in a retention basin. The ONCOM did not really care whether the stormwater was coming from 100 foot buffer here or way up here. We said the owner had to take care of the same the thing. The equivalent argument for your site is since the De December event had impact coming down, the question is the stormwater that implement you had a stormwater design and it failed and the question is whether the, what you've had put in place since then was adversely impacted by other things happening upstream from the 100 foot buffer so the only way you could say the stormwater so the erosion control that was in place failed not the stormwater the only way you could say the stormwater failed is if the the ten, final detention basin all the catch basins right. were in and then we had a release into the wetlands. That's when you could say the stormwater failed. Well, what I'm saying is we had a ton of erosion control in place and that failed. Um, the upper the upper section that is where we're working does not go to the bottom wetland. It goes to the top. There's no silt that you can we we've walked the site. I've walked the site every other week with um, Isabella since that big storm in December. Peter walked it. There's no silt getting into upper, upper wetland. There's no silt getting into the stream. And that's where any water from that top section would end up. The problem was that that stream 
came down and we had no way because we we had we had chipped out the ledge a pipe would have been up in the air we couldn't put a pipe we couldn't pipe that clean water so it just went into the hole that we were chipping and got mixed with the silt and then we struggled to get the silt out of that and we did a lot to get temporary things to get the silt out of that which we did but it was only for a short a short time that that even happened and now everything's in place where that it's not going to happen okay so so we're already past that point is all i'm saying we're past that so like i said that top section is going to get hydra seeded and Four weeks. So, so you're, if I can summarize and you tell me if I'm correct, the excessive amount of silt that we saw in December is because the storm happened while you were in the process of transitioning from beginning state to end state. Absolutely. You, it, it overwhelmed uh, what you had in place then. The, the question that I would, was alluding to is, when you submitted the order of conditions, you didn't have in that that as an intermediate state you would have a basin in, in that was there that causing the problems in December. No, at that at that time, I had an order of conditions that right. only showed silt fence around the bottom of the site. Right. But I am obligated by not only the SWIP but just by the wet, the Wetland yeah. Protection Act, if I don't see that that's working properly to. Right, do yeah. other measures, which I, I have done and I have been doing on a regular, working, very regular basis. They're working now. OK. Yes. Any other commissioner comments? I just feel like we don't there's there's a there's something that's missing in this. So you were able to control it. It seems like your site's great now, but we don't know about that other part or what's coming down the road. And if you hadn't planned for it before, how do I'm just thinking about protecting the wetlands again so it doesn't happen again. It's all going to be hydro seeded in the third week of March. It's all going to be restored. Yes. Yeah. Grass can take up to 21 days to germinate, even if it's hydro seeded. Yeah. And the temperatures have to be above 60. And I'm yep. hoping that your attack, the, the material you're using to tack it down stays, but it may, you may have to do that a couple of times. And we will. And the tackifier we're using is a tackifier that you, they use on landfills to, to, get the soil to stay in place while they're waiting for the grass to grow. So we are like Gene Burnett cover technologies knows more about this stuff than I do. He knows the tackifiers to use. Um, he sent the, a detail to the hydro, the um, hydro seeding company today of what to use to stabilize the entire site. I, I, I mean, we're, we're at a point now that we're getting towards the, the, the easy part of the project, um, it, it's 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 just it seems like it's John. Simple question. Yeah. The water is cleaner. Yeah. Everybody agrees. Yeah, absolutely. But is there less? So so it's it's going to be post and pre and post has to be the same. And Mass Highway is just reviewed all the drainage up there again for you know. We're trying to get our blasting permit. They're gonna. We're in our 75 to 100 percent design stage. They they reviewed all the drainage calcs again because of the culvert that comes under 16. Um, I'll know within. Uh, they're gonna have their review done by February 26. I'll be happy to give that to the board, and that's a review of the site the way it is right now. So I I'm, I'm happy to give that. You know, see if I can get a copy of the review. But Mass Highway is currently reviewing our drainage right now. And do they take into consideration the whole site? They do. I I, I believe they do. Yeah. So I gave them all the plans for the site. They've been out. They've been out at the site because we're we're trying to get a curb cut permit there and a blasting permit there. So they have been on site. And and so is DEP. And, and I I understand that we had a release of silt into the well, and we've agreed to clean it up. We've agreed to pay for a peer review. It's basically we're going to go in and we're going to shovel into five gallon buckets and remove it from the wetlands and clean up the leaves. OK, right on both sides of the yeah. road. Yeah, so the other side of the road, um, you can go back and watch planning board tapes. That culvert on the other side is silted all the way up to the top of the pipe. The water comes out and bubbles up. It was like that when we started the project. I had agreed at planning board that if the Lake Association wanted to permit it, I would supply the manpower and the equipment to dredge that area out so all the drainage that comes down um, route 140 is untreated all flows in through those culverts so 
I did have a release of silt. It's not a lot of silt. There's no way that I built up three feet of silt there. Um, and my office still stands on that. If the Lake Association wants to permit it, I have no problem supplying the, the, the manpower and the equipment to go and dredge that out. Well, the um, highway um, paperwork should be, you know, it, yeah, it, it, it's be brutal. Better. Like the, the catch basins up um, past Alicante, they don't even go to a drain handle. They flow to a pipe and go right into the lake. The other side, there's no detention across the street. The uh, Hill Street, all the silt comes down the road, goes into the lowest catch basin there, across the street into a manhole, directly into the lake. No treatment whatsoever. Oh, nice part is we don't use sand anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is true. But if you take, I have pictures of Hill Street, there's grooves in Hill Street that are, you know, foot and a half deep of silt coming down there. Okay. Um, That's all I have. Yeah. Question for Isabella. Has John and his team seen the two estimates that we have before us? I haven't forwarded the estimates, so I got one from, uh, um, what's his name? Matt, Matt Byrne, professional wetland scientist at BC, BSC Group. And then I have another one from Brandon Fanouf from Ecosystem Solutions. I was also in contact with Jeff Walsh, but he had personal thing come up this week and wasn't able to submit a plan. He said he could do it early next week, Monday, if we did want to push the decision until our next meeting and see what his proposal was. Um, he, Jeff Walsh is the planning board uh, peer review typically as well. So he already has some background on the site and he has a wetland scientist who works with him who would review the restoration plans while Jeff would be reviewing the storm or the the notice of intent, the storm water that was included in the notice of intent, along with the erosion control on site, um, and Jeff would do monitoring, weekly monitoring as well would be in his plan, but he hasn't submitted that. Okay, um, you'd you'd be able to take a look at them. The language in both of the documents is basically the proposal says we're going to review a bunch of documents. And then we're going to write a report. And my feeling is that uh, the the ecosystem solution specifically calls out that they want to be including the storm, doing a review of the stormwater report, in order for them to repair, prepare a letter report for us. The proposal from the BSC group doesn't specifically say that they're going to be looking at the stormwater documents, but it does say they will they will be reviewing uh, all background, all available background information, and the stormwater stuff would be part of that as well. Um, I believe that we can, so, so in terms of them reviewing the actual planning board jurisdictional stormwater calculations, it looks like they want to be able to look at those in order for them to prepare a report for us on things that we are jurisdictional for. What we could do is direct them that when they are preparing their letter report to us to make sure that they're sensitive to items which are jurisdictional for us. And if they have other concerns, then we would be referring them to the planning board for review. That sounds fair to me. So does that, uh, does that meet with how you think this should be working. Chair Hogg, thank you. Adam Brodsky, I, I just want to be clear because I'm not certain everyone understood my point, which is that your geographical limit of your jurisdiction is wetlands and within 100 feet. You do have the regulatory ability to go beyond 100 feet if there's direct evidence that the activities outside of your jurisdiction have impacted the wetland. And I respectfully suggest that based upon John's testimony, that there is no such evidence. Again, okay. I know that Hoffman has made some allegations. I don't think there's any evidence other than what the project manager has, has presented to you. With respect to the peer review, um, if you're going to require a review of the stormwater report for the project, I'd ask that you please modify your enforcement order to indicate that, because our fear here is that we have a valid order of conditions. And uh, and we're concerned that this is a back doorway to review a project that's already been approved. And so that's the concern here. Again, we have no issue with reviewing 
uh, the wetlands restoration. Um, John, I don't know whether you have a problem with the wetland consultant just commenting on the state of your present erosion controls. Um, that might be a that might be a, a compromise here. But uh, if you're going to hire a peer review consultant to actually review the stormwater report, the stormwater calculations, um, that's revisiting a project that's already been approved. And I uh, again, I, I don't want to speak for Mr. Nainart um, that I, I believe that the client's going to resist. So okay. I'm offering perhaps a middle ground here, which is hire the wetlands consultant to review the wetlands restoration and to review the present erosion control measures to assure that what's out there is sufficient to address a major storm like this, but not to reopen the project for an overall stormwater review. Okay, so I would ask if John, you and Adam, if you could work with Isabella on I asked earlier if there were any interest in modifying the existing EO. If the two of you in the next two weeks can come back with a, you know, a word document flagging what you want the changes to be, and then we could review that. Absolutely. And this would meet your needs. Uh, in terms of the letter of engagement, when we pick a peer reviewer, we would be saying that the there is a sensitive sensitivity towards the stormwater and whether it's jurisdictional or not, and make sure that they're clear on what they would be reviewing and recommending. But it looks like they want to review the stormwater calculations as part of their overall evaluation for us. Yeah, Mr. Chair, just a, a little pushback. That, that upper area, I don't think anyone can deny, contributes water to the problem contributed a, a certain amount of volume of water to the problem, whether that went into the upper wetland before it went into the lower wetland, it gave more water. And that by cutting the trees, it gave even more water. So well, that's, that's it, that the jurisdiction needs to be looked at the whole site well, that, for that drainage and for analysis of and I'm saying, based on our earlier discussion, did the tree cutting happen in 1921? That's, that's yeah. and what did the planning board evaluate? That takes it. If we can demonstrate there's a discrepancy, then it's the planning board's issue, not ours. Yep. And and it may be that as the various people are reviewing the documentation and the paperwork, they come to a a, a consensus on that, and you may end up going to. Uh, it, it, so, so what I'm saying is that if there's an agreement among your party and people doing the investigation that there's a discrepancy between what the planning board reviewed, then you'd go back and talk to the planning board about that, and and that way it wouldn't be jurisdictional with us. So, um, I believe I heard you say that we would be getting a third. Uh, well, that's Q. So okay. there is one more that I was waiting for from Jeff Walsh, which would come on Monday. And since he does additionally do the reviews for planning board, you know, it's up to the commission if they have trust in someone who's done work at the town prior versus these two other prior professional wetland consultants. That's up to you guys on who you want to pick. So I'm, I'm just okay. letting you know that there is the option to wait for Jeff to also, because yes. we have 30 days to decide on these two proposals. Yes, you're doing a weekly site visit and there haven't been any problems. Are you comfortable waiting another two weeks to start the evaluation, especially if it's primarily going to focus on the restoration? I think it's it's a bummer if we had to wait another three weeks, but that's up oh, again up to the commission. Three weeks? Yes. Oh, okay. it's in three weeks. So it's again up to the commission. I think these they're all great options, all three of them. All right, let's go around and say, do we wait for a third one or do we pick one of these two opinions? Our next meeting isn't until three weeks, so we just said. Second week in February. Second we week in March, March, yeah. Any, any other? So I haven't heard I, yes or no. <laughs> I think these candidates are good. The, the advantage to the third one that would come in is they 
have worked with the town before and are familiar with the site. But that could not, that's true, but you could also look at it the other way. Okay. That these are completely independent because they haven't seen the site before. Okay. Other other views? No, I'm, I'm either way. Okay. Uh, no, they're both good candidates. Uh, I like a, a local guy, but uh, whatever. Sean, would you rather get this underway quicker or do you care whether you wait? Well, we just discussed that we we're going to work the three of us to, to on, the EO. Be on the EO and I, I think this is going to be involved in that. So I would I would rather wait until we discuss what we're going to do on the EO before we get our. Okay, so at that in. point, it's it's a irrelevant because we have the time to get the third one in and review all. Of Absolutely. Them. So since we're, we have already discussed working on the EO, let us work out the EO and then get decide what we're going to do on a consultant. Well, it sounds like that's a good. Since I, since I don't have a clear consensus, I'm going to force someone to make a motion. I want to hear one of the following two motions. I either hear, want to hear someone motion to accept one of these two proposals, or I want to hear someone make a motion to defer until th the next meeting in three weeks when we will have another, and then we will choose between three proposals. Go for it, so. I, <laughs> All right, I motion that um, since there are things to do, that we wait three weeks. Is there a second? No second. Okay, any further discussion? Okay, all in favor? Okay. Opposed? Aye. <laughs> okay. So uh, we have successfully decided not to decide. <laughs> Is there a meth option? I need to go to town hall. So <laughs> a meth option? Well, <laughs> we we will we will want to do. Uh, okay, so the the action on this site, uh, and you're going to get stuck coming back. I'm <laughs> at least it's three weeks and not two. Yeah, but, but so, like, I'm so, just going to put every Thursday now, every other Thursday. Um, Okay. So the two actions for Isabella are to work with you on updating the coming back with a draft EO update and to ex to to make sure we have the third uh, third P the third RFQ. These are good for one month. Uh, you may need to push back to them and see if we can get a one week extension in in order to make a decision in three weeks, depending on when. What this what what the actual date of the proposal is? If it's February twenty, I think they both give us thirty days. Oh, okay, if it's thirty days from today, then that's fine. Uh, okay, so we're done with forty five forty nine Oxbridge. You should stay sitting about one twenty three North. But there's no update. Uh, no, we, that's well. We said four weeks, so I don't. Oh, okay. next meeting we'll discuss that. Okay, so 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 you're going to come back. Is there an ANRAD in the works? There is. No. Okay, great. Okay, I'm trying to get. This side square away. Okay. Right. And and the other thing I wanted Just to on. Oh. the other thing I wanted to address was you were you were talking about you felt that you we were singling you out for special treatment from all of the other December sites. Well, they're here uh, and uh, oh. we're meeting with them. And the other no, one my yeah, the response would be that we're you know, I gave you deadlines of March 1st and you submitted them the day after. So the other ones we're already working on it. You know, the other ones were waiting for restoration plans. And the other one for 34 Cape Road, they're not in active construction and we have been working with them to get information okay. from them. So I just wanted to make you feel that less put upon. So because I was because <laughs> I was on top of stuff. It's more like catching up on everything now because yeah. it's been developed. Oh, I know. I know. I know that. 23. Did I get the number one? 30. All right, thank you. Is that it? Yeah. Hi, John. Yeah, thank you. Bye. See you in a few weeks. Three weeks. Yo. Thanks. John, I'll give you a call in the morning. Yeah, sure. Um, like I said, yeah, so these, these are a lot of new measures, so we'll get to see them work together. It's a fascinating show. There's going to be a lot of moving parts. Yeah. All right, thank you. Okay, well, now come on up. Sorry to keep your kids. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a school night though, right? <laughs> it's a school vacation. But they they were perfectly quiet. Yeah, learning the, the wheels of government. This just this is not real Robert's rules of order. I'm taking shortcuts here and there. We actually teach this in the Boy Scouts. We have the kids come to like a select board meeting and whatnot so they can understand how government works in time. <laughs> I think they're a little young for that. <laughs> sure that. 
I have it here, so I'm good. And I think I reviewed it. Pretty and fast. I already reviewed it. Chicken feed quite fast. Oh, yeah, I did. And I know you. <laughs> I review everything, though. So introduce yourself and. My name is Angelo and I live at 13 Valley Beach. Yeah, and so I got a plan from the engineer today, but he's not able to make it. And so I walked the site, but I would recommend we either we all review it and have the engineer come for the. I would definitely like the engineer here because I have some questions. OK. Is it going to be a hardship if you delay any work on the site for three weeks? Oh, okay. Well, it'd we'll, be probably be better. We'll be, still this, we'll frozen. But, but do me a favor. Yeah. Get some straw in that gully. Mm -hmm. I, I saw some pictures. I don't know if you spread right straw. There. But that Thanks. was the one thing I asked you to do. Yeah, that one with the tree. Isabella, can you go back, please? See, now that <laughs> that should be filled with straw. Okay. Right? Hey, I don't care. Okay. Yeah. I, because I, that, that's raw dirt at a steep slope, and we're going to get rain all day tomorrow. Okay, so it's only going to get more of a gully, and and it those might, trees are going to die anyway. Just so get, you know, well, that's a, that's another issue as to what the final issue is because they're going to die. Somebody's like buried that there, tree. They're going to die, and so that tree is going to die because you can't. The root flare needs air, yeah. <laughs> and it's so get air. a larger discussion. If and I, this is what we need to decide. I guess are we going to allow this man to? offer a notice of intent for the work that's already been done versus no it's an enforcement order and restoration has to be done i don't know what the best way forward is but that steep slope can't stand so right. it's got to be changed and landscaped and, and it's your backyard i want you to like it but the, the engineer doesn't also cite cleaning up the wetlands and that I right, so there, there's a there's a lot of issues that yeah, but but working with you, I'd much rather work with you than try to bang heads. So the engineer d doesn't cite that we that wetlands were filled. Yes, that bothers that's, me too. But well, that's not no, you, Leah. Uh, I don't think wetlands were filled. You know, the the backyard was leveled, but if you look at the plans, it it the height of the area is fairly similar to what it's always been. It has been filled in more, but that slope is how it's been. But I, don't, I mean, but that's what foot, no, just well, it's a lot more than that. Uh, can you go through your pictures? Because you had a picture with one tree that's at right at the base of and it's got a blue flag around it. Right. That so was that my other thing. that tells me that that blue flag is a wet wetlands. So the, you don't that have tree the was to tell. that one. That's got a blue flag around it. And it's buried a foot and a half a foot. At least. So where was the wetland line? You don't where know. is the wetland line? Is it so that's you need we need to probe your guy saying because he's trying to he is, he's done a good job that there was a historic road there and it was impacted by that farm road and therefore it's not protectable resource. I, I don't want to hear that because that was 75 years ago. So at, at what we have to go back to the, the plan, the original one with the house, what was the notice of intent? What was the slope that was supposed to be and create a compromise between those two? That's and we want to work with you, but we want to make sure that things are done right. You know, I understand. I just did what you guys asked me to do. Do you know what I mean? So I just um, I I hire him and like explain to him what um, you guys looking for. And, that's and, and a lot of it was good. Like when he when he was talking about the rhododendron maximus, that's a good tree to put there. That's great, you know, and seeding with some native seed mixes and stuff like that. A lot of that was good. I think there's just some details that are missing that we need to know from him. And all right, because we don't want to tell you what to do, but we want to approve a plan that somebody has done. So this is where I don't want an engineer doing this. I want a landscape architect kind of figuring out what the slope is and what the vegetation is. So uh, mm -hmm. we can't tell you who to hire, but that that's the kind of issues that I want to get into because it's going to be compromised. It's, it's it's so, and I don't know how to do that. But I'm looking for a professional to get the best 
balance between your desires and ours, and you got to pay for that professional. But so okay, so three weeks. Sounds right. You want a motion or what? What do you need? No, so if the the engineer can come next time. Yeah, with you gotta ask. Yeah. yeah. That would be better. But thank you for coming because it, oh, it shows us that you're trying. You know what I mean? You're making the effort, so that's important. Yeah, I didn't know he was supposed to be here. So if I knew that, I would ask him like you, many weeks ago. You see how we have people on the screen? Even if he can he can join the meeting that way. Yeah, definitely. He doesn't have to be here in person. He can just join yeah. on the, the. It's easier if he brings a big plan. And that's true, too. Yeah. You know, Good you point. Can, you can go through the plan. He could drop it off. Isabella. Okay. So three weeks with a proviso, he gets some straw in that gully. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? Go gully. Oh, in the gully. No, the oh, ravine. Yeah. And just a quick question. Besides the engineer, who else do you guys need me to hire? An engineer who has sensitivity to plantings, because I don't want. I don't really want to see riprap there. I guess that's an option. I would much rather see something green. Okay. And so then what type of plants and not just grass? Because uh, no, he did uh, call for a tree. He has he, he has some tree, he has some tree planting. So he, he has the rhododendrons, which is perfect for that area, but it's a tree that takes a little bit of time to establish and needs to be watered. But it is good for that area. It's a nice tree too. It's a nice native tree. Uh, so I the, think that was a good choice. Blueberry bush is a wetland. It's on. Yeah, you could do high bush, but they don't get as big. I think that the roots. All the blueberries are all through there, and that way they're, they're going to have fruit in the, in yeah, the summer. Yeah, that's true. You like blueberries? That would work. Yeah, it, in my, I don't, they like a little shade. They can do shade. I don't know how much fruit they'll get if they don't get it. A little anyway. bit more sun, but. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Anything okay. else? Eight hours of work to put in. So. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Thank you. And unfortunately, well, actually, if you have a professional with you, I can have you come before them because you'll both have professionals. Uh, like I said, I didn't know he was supposed to come. Uh, my bad. Uh, okay. And like I said, he can he can come and be on the TV. Okay. So yeah, I'll talk to him. Thank you guys. Okay. Thank Thanks. You. Have a good night. Okay. Um, I see we have uh, AJ and Christine here. Uh, is there a status update on 23 Cape Road? Uh, not so the Mike Mike Dean with um oh I'm forgetting the firm so Mike Dean is sub submitting a restoration plan I don't have that yet uh, it should be coming in in the next few weeks for plans to remove the silt from the wetland come April or May um, and then they did submit uh photos that they've installed additional silt fence and saw all wattle barriers on the slope at intervals throughout the slope um so they've put up some more mitigation matter measures because the mike dean the scientist has said to do that I, um and then we'll be getting a plan in the upcoming weeks but that that's the update um, have you had time to look upstream and see whether there is silt? People we can talk to upstream and see whether they have silt flowing into the creek. I haven't had time to do that, and there's been snow, so it wouldn't have made sense to stomp okay. around in the ice. Um, yep. But I mean, do you want me to do all five of the upstream people? I mean, it's I'm we're getting minutes from March last year where it says that there's silt in the wetlands because of 23 Cape. I don't understand why I'd have to go upstream. Because when there's a rain event like in December and early January, they're seeing silt flowing down. In no, they're seeing the silt being resuspended. Well, that's the question. We want to make sure that it actually is still from the site and there isn't new silt flowing in. Okay, so then do I cold call all well, of the people? Well, hold, hold, hold off and, and, and we'll see what whether there's this bad or rain event that's causing things uh, at this point. And so, uh, AJ, Christine, do you have uh, input on this? Hi there. Um, yeah, just a question. So just I, identify yourself with your last names and your property. Sure. Uh, your address. Christine and AJ Sharpenel, 14 Talbot Farm Drive. Um, so yeah, I, on the February 8th, meeting, I uh, heard that uh, Agent Isabella 
was expecting a restoration plan. And I also, at the same time that week, saw them do the mitigation. I saw them, you know, with a excavator and uh, installing the silt fence along that path that they cleared. So I guess, so the restoration part is just, if I understand correctly, you're just going to, it's about the cleanup that may happen in April and May during the dry season to get the sedimentation that's been sitting there out. And then, so the, the mitigation that we saw, those erosion controls, what is motivating that? Is that just precaution? Because a, a parent, I mean, from what I understood, there is no more silt coming down, you don't think, and that's just historic silt that keeps like reanimating. Some of the siltation barriers and straw wattles had gotten blown out by <laughs> the December and January storms. That's what they okay. were re repairing and replacing. That's That's the photos you have here? Yeah, and I also think because it is a slope, having the additional barriers is going to prevent more blowouts from occurring downstream. Can't uh, hurt. So it's just, I, uh, yeah, it is a, additional measures. I know this is a long way off, but I think a good measure of where the silt is coming from is after they do the rest, the, after they clean the wetlands, not that we want any more silt in the wetlands, but we'll be able to tell then um, because that wet, the silt will have been removed. And if there is no more silt coming in, we'll be able to tell if it's coming from and where it's coming from, um, which is a long ways off and that doesn't help in the short term, but at least it would give us more evidence where it is coming from. So, so is the, um, uh, th this reinforcement of having them just replace some of the erosion controls and it looks like they did put more because it looks like there's two layers of a silt fence now. Is that tied to an enforcement order? No, no it's we did a site walk and said, hey, the storm blew it out. You should repair it before the next storm. And they said, yeah, that makes sense. And and so that in order to prevent any, the last thing that the, the property owner wants is for us to come back and say, we told you to fix the siltation barriers, you didn't. And now we have evidence that more silt flowed in. You're in big trouble now. To avoid that of him not doing something we recommended, he went and did that. I see, okay. I suppose that's all okay. on our end, just it's seeing coming. what was going on with the mitigation and the restoration. You've got to get an education <laughs> and, and how, how, how other sites in town are having their issues as well. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank all you. right. <laughs> so um, let's see. Cross that went off. We did. Okay, I guess agenda item number four is next. Uh, 41 Bellingham Street, tree removal inquiry, review photos taken from February 16th and any action, take any action required. Yeah, I visited the site, so I got the call from the homeowner. Um, they want to remove this pine. It's, <laughs> I would say, yeah. <laughs> um, and so the forester said that they needed a permit from us and, you know, I, I kind of gave administrative approval for that one. Uh, the other ones, they're small trees kind of on the bare, on the end, they're um, measured here. And they are, the w wetland is on this site, so they're in the buffer zone, but they're in their yard as well. And I would say none of the trees were over 20 inch diameter breast height. They're not big, um, but they're encroaching on their lawn. And so since they're having the one tree removed already, they wanted to get a couple other ones that were in. That's all their... flat. How far away is the wetland? Or... That so the, the wetland is pretty far back, but this area is has been wet since it's been snow and melt. Um, but the wetland on Mass Mapper is much farther back. So it's all forested area, but the lawn, I think, is this kind of perimeter on the photo. Kind of tree disabled. Bring up Mass Mapper and show us where the trees end up being. What address is 41 Bellingham? And so I think a lot of trees are coming on down along that road. Uh, but here's their site. Mass Mapper doesn't have it on there. They're t wanting to take out some trees out here. 
So that's the the wetlands are over to the right. The wetlands, yeah, yeah. are back here. That shouldn't be a problem. I, uh, yeah, yeah, it's way and they're all things. pretty small and young trees. Um, so uh, you gave administrative approval for the one leaner. Do we have um, someone making a motion to? I'll make a motion to, to allow the cutting of. Uh, I will second the, the killing of young trees. Don't have to second it. <laughs> the vote against it. So, is there a second? I'll second it. I don't. I don't think in the long run. Okay. They can have their lawn, which is a food desert and a pollinator <laughs> any, desert. Any any further discussion? It'll, it'll be shady. Any uh, stipulation about? Oh the yeah, they are. They are. Um, they're gonna leave the stumps for my recommendation. Are they using climbers? They're, they're using. They're gonna have the. Um, no, they're not using climbers. They're using a machine, but they're going to, the crane, but they're going to park it on the lawn yeah, to cut gonna, even the pine. They're going to crane it down. Yeah. If they crane. want it in their yard, they can get a stump grinder. We were allowed. Yeah, it's on there in the, in the lawn. Okay. So, so when you are writing up really some, a piece of paper that the tree cutter wants, it should say no grubbing, but you no know, grubbing. Yes to grinding, but we would prefer that you, if, if it's, Especially if it's not in the yard area, if you left. I would love that. What's it? A snag? Is yes, it's a snag. A snag for uh, habitat, wildlife habitat. Yeah, pick a few trees to leave as a couple of snags. That'd be good. Woodpeckers, don't they want woodpeckers in their yard? Well, yeah, that's, that's, what I, that's what I said. Exactly. I have one that. <laughs> yeah, they like and that. Every like three years, they come to my house and say, You gotta get okay. it. Uh, what do they mean? No, it's a clock. Oh, one of those pop -up <laughs> yes. One. Moving along, uh, agenda item five. That's how we scare them. Bellingham Street review status of site, take action. Isn't that That's what we just did here? Oh, never mind. Did twenty-three K? Three Morrison Drive review status of site and take action required. We have an update um, on this one. Yeah, I meant to take it off the agenda. It's not. There's no wetlands on the site from when the homeowner bought bought it um so the billing inspector was going to handle replying to the butter but i'll follow up on reaching out to the butter if it is but you know we don't they can clear as much land as they want which i don't that's fun too yeah um but that's not those calls shouldn't um, come to me there is there any priority habitat or anything there no okay okay uh, agenda item number eight, Sylvan Springs review inspection report from February 9th, 2024 and take any action required. There's nothing, there was no real action items outlined. Um, nothing really new. Um, they need to put trash racks in their ponds um, what's a trash rack uh stops floatables from going into yeah. the pond. Oh, yeah so okay. it's at the so end it can of the easier so it's got to be maintained and, it, they, do that? <laughs> <laughs> and it's like a big pit and there's like kids but yeah i don't know yep okay um this also goes to marry the agent in upton are they happy with or is their enforcement order still working and are we we're upstream of them so if they have any issues that they want to refer to us or is that still okay i think their enforcement order is still open yep okay but so we'll just listen to see if they they have anything for us to take up um Agenda item number nine, conservation restriction activity. Discuss budget for 43 Quisset Road and take any action required. Yeah, I talked with Ann Mazar and she said for CPA funds, she suggested that we split the costs as, you know, this is, it's CONCOM's, C, it was CPA money that established the CR, but CONCOM is in charge of maintaining it. So she said that she would uh, bring it to the, Bring it to CPA to suggest that they give nine hundred dollars to reinstall the spars with us. It's the next. The, there's when's their next meeting? Their land use, aren't they? Uh, Community Preservation Act. Community Preservation. I don't know when their next meeting is. Yeah, I I support the idea of 
splitting, splitting that okay. works for me. All right, then the action item would be to find out when they would be able to have that meeting and March 5th. Excuse me. It's March, March 5th. 5th. And then getting back to the vendor and asking if their estimate can be extended until. Until that time. Their, their quote. <clears throat> Mr. Chair, if it's it's going to stop the work from getting done, I would just pay them, and then we can get reimbursed from. So I don't want this to hold the up. Budget can the budgeting stuff. I don't have kind of transfer. Oh, I don't know. I don't. I I don't have the estimate expiration off the top of my head either. So that's I would have to look back. But on maybe that. it's easier to have it a split check. So if it, they're, okay I, I think it was. I think it might have just been that that offer stands until we come back. Okay. I, I do too, because there's nothing really to do yet to change the price. It's mainly all labor. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I, we, I, I need a decision. Do we authorize that we will pay it and get the bill with? Well, no, no, no. The, the, the question is, as Peter suggested, do we? authorized to pay the whole amount now and hope to get reimbursed from from the other town account or do we wait until after March 5th? Well, I think I think it could just be you've already approved spending 800 so if I only spend 900 okay there's no change. And the other thing would be for you to reach out to Back. the farmer and, mm -hmm. and let him know that we're actually going to be pulling well, the trigger on this and schedule something for him. I would almost think it should come from me as the staff member in town hall, okay. and I'd like to send 30 days notice that we will be doing That's good too. work mm -hmm. in mail By because everything else from the town. This, take this on yourself. I, I just think it should be consistent. Taxes come through mail. Everything else okay. comes through mail. He doesn't like email. Okay. You know, it should he be. He does text. <laughs> I'm not texting him a bit. <laughs> that, no. <laughs> Um, he should get 30 days notice that we'll be entering the property to install the bars. Okay, great. So you can set that up. Uh, I'm going to skip 10 and go to 11. Uh, late Nipmuc Task Force, any updates? We, uh, as the task force, chose to take February off. So <laughs> we'll have our next meeting in March, which then we will continue the discussion on the lake water level uh, readers. OK, uh, at some point we will have a. Restoration plan for the Uxbridge Road site and we will. At some point may need to start working with the Lake Task Force if there's going to be a big dredge going in there and pulling stuff out. Uh, OK. Um, that will be have that will have to be filed for the state, won't it? Because that's a uh, state permitted Great Lake. There's going to be a whole lot of things, and I'm expecting to have experts tell us what the permitting process is going to be. Yes. Yeah, I don't remember the permit uh, when they dredged it. The first half. Well, through the no, street. it would have to come through us first because land underwater is jurisdictional for CONCOM, so we would approve it. They'd probably send divers and assess if there is a need on how much sediment is down there, and then if we would start the permitting, then they would have to get a chapter 91 license. Okay. Agenda item number 10, vegetated swales best management practices. Here proposal from Leah and take action required. And I'm going to preface this by saying, I'm pushing the work on you. Not as I've done a lot of the work. <laughs> I've done a lot of, I did a lot, spend a lot of time re researching this, finding places. Um, I also found two other places that as well, the waddles that we were talking about that are biodegradable, Good. biodegradable, two different kinds. And now I'm not sure what to do because <laughs> swales may not be jurisdictional for us. Well, your work would not go wasted if we then take all of basically the goal is to come up with a document or a page with links. I already got that. Best management plans. And, and I already got that. We can definitely have it posted the question is whether it's under the concom web page or whether it goes over planning board so this may mean that you end up going to a planning board meeting and saying the concom would like you to do this because it cuts down on our 
on, on the stormwater stuff. And, and so it, it improves the habitat. Well, and vegetated swales as well, just so you know, Bob, they do not take as much maintenance. You cut them in November, that's it. And scoop them and then take away the vegetation. They're, depending on what mix you use, they're really not any harder to take care of. You don't even have to mow them. Mr. Chair, I'm in strong support of <laughs> us collectively getting more knowledgeable about how to treat water. And I bristle when I hear someone saying it's not jurisdictional because it's a grass swale and we do what do you call it? Old fashioned country drainage. That is jurisdictional. And we're in, trying to encourage green, low impact development and pocket rain gardens Herbius. outside of the 100 foot bubble. Herbius so we, we sh could, should be putting together a document how your yard can be better for Lake Nipmuc kind of thing, or, you know, for, so. Keep, keep pushing back on me when I say something stupid, I don't know. No, no, but then whose job is it to do it? Is it a, a, a one pager that we give out to homeowners or we should develop, should, could, what a I, library of things. Kind what of thing. I would like to see is, the, it's the construction people that do most of the work. Yeah. Not the homeowners, they're the one who, that's where we have to start. Look at the right. In really if like, well, if construction. the construction people have to do this in some way, shape, or form, put it in their NOIs or whatever, then we're going to make an, an impact because homeowners aren't. It's going to be built already. They're not going to well, do it. Here's here's my here's my other comment. If the planning board has a best practice document for all subdivisions. It will hit those that eve that never come before us because they're not within a buffer zone. So, yes, it's good for us to have, but it's even better if the planning board does it town wide. Well, why can't we have both? Exactly, but it starts with coming up with the information and then and then I have it. it. I, what do you need me to do with the information that I have? Um, is it is it now in a form that you are comfortable? Is it a word document that we could mail out to people? No, it's yeah. It, and the other thing is, you know, conflict of interest. We do have to be careful if we're putting like companies up or, you know, we can put state stuff on the website. We can put links to go outside of the website. But we can't say, you know, this company's way of constructing us. A right. thing. It's a licensed thing, but a, yeah. a grass swale is a generic concept, right? Yeah. No one owns the. You can't offer contractors for hire, is what she's trying to say. Well, I think also what she, well, I, I would say she's saying is that you can't specify, recommend a private product, whether it's uh, a swale or a catch basin or a filter bag. Yeah. Uh, you, you can, it has got to be generic, uh, a, uh, that we want, uh, stuff that breaks down. We mm -hmm. can't specify you're going to use a MGM type no, but, three, but we can show them, right. Hey, this is what we're looking for along the lines of biodegradable yeah. or a grass. Or, right. That's, I don't know how to, so if I was writing it, I could say. The waddle fence has to be made out of straw and burlap. Should and should, a picture. Should. Well, there's different types of biodegradable waddles, so there's, is, there's options. It's not a must. It's it's a should. This should all be in a recommendation language. And provide this is, options, maybe. Yeah, yeah make but, people do something. You can request them. To, that's, well, that's, no, that's so. My thought is this: I'm sick of walking around seeing all the plastic from the waddle fences. Can't we mandate that they use a biode biodegradable waddle? No, I don't. I don't. No, I don't think we can mandate it, that because it, it's yeah, no I mean, biodegradable. The other, the other thing is, if it's a site that's going to go on for multiple years and it biodegrades, then they have to replace it. Yeah. Arguably, I think we yeah. could. <laughs> we could. Uh, require them to remove their erosion control if it's not going to biodegrade, right? So if there is plastic monofilaments that's going to last there, yeah, they ought to take that out. I'm basically, sorry. Basically, no difference. Right? 
If there's a certificate of compliance, we would walk and say they need to remove it. You don't have to remove the hay bales because they're going to ruin. You don't even have to remove the oak stakes. They're going to be there for 30 years, but someone can recycle those. <laughs> but bonfire. Yeah. It's what I'm trying to. There's two two things here. One is we need to be more green. Two is. It's teaching people that there's a way to do things the right way, and it's not. It's the same thing as doing it the other way. It's like you can put some diatomaceous earth down, sprinkle it around, or you can use your pump spray with whatever horrible chemical and do the same action. But one is less. One is not going to hurt the environment at all. And a wattle fence that has the plastic stuff in it, even if they, even it, the, the fact that it's down and it degrades, that's still damaging the environment. I can't tell you how many animals or whatever get tangled in that netting. Um, and we're putting plastic out there, you know? So if it biodegrades, oh, well, I mean, put another one down. I don't know. It just, it just seems horrible. You just have to be careful because that doesn't have any impact on the wetlands. It so, doesn't, plastic doesn't have impact on the wetlands? The way that they're stopping the water is what we're concerned with. Right. So he's making the argument it affects the wildlife, though, which is well, we don't we we, we, we not, protect but, the but wildlife it, habitat, no, not the wildlife itself. Not. Somebody leaves a wattle fence down and erosion happens. Where is that wattle fence going to go? That plastic going to go? We have to we have to when we give them a certificate, the certificate of compliance at the end of the project, they take it out. We don't approve. We don't give them their certificate. They can't sell their house with an open order of conditions. They need a certificate of compliance. That's when we walk the site and say, please take the silt waddle out because there's plastic here. So it is manageable on our end. It's like a man. Yeah, I guess it is a management on our side that we need to make them take it out. There's not, you know, there shouldn't be silt waddle remaining at the close of a project. Right, but if it was biodegradable. So if you give them the to. choice of waddles, you should be clear up front that they're going to have to remove them. And that's what we haven't been now because they tend to choose it because it's easier. And it's labor saving. It's not. Uh, it's it's the same if you use a burlap waddle as it is the, when you use the hay wrapped in plastic. I'm, no, I was thinking they, they do that instead of road netting or the hay bales. Don't, don't yeah, well, I think so. if we wanted to adopt a policy that we only allow compostable waddles in Menden, then we would have a public hearing that we post in the legal newspaper and there would be a you would have language that you would want specifically adopted in Menden's bylaw. It would have to be a public hearing that we notify the town that we're thinking of adopting a policy if we're going to enforce it. Bylaw changes, probably town meeting. Bylaw changes, town meeting, rules and regulations are not. And so I think it could fall under rules and regulations. And that wouldn't need to be a warrant, no. Okay, but the the approach that I'm looking to follow is the same one we've been doing for years about protecting uh, the wells. And protecting we, wells is the language that we're using now about grind, not grub. We can we can set expectations when someone comes in with an NOI. We can just like uh, Peter and Mike grill them about pipe sizes and concrete thingies that I don't know much about. You would be able to talk to them and say, is your waddle going to be burlap biodegradable? And if not, you can, why not? You can say we prefer biodegradable waddles. Well, and, and, and you say that it, and then they can say, well, it's cheaper. And then you can respond. It, it's not going to be cheaper because we're going to make you we're not going to sign off on your uh, with an or with a certificate of compliance until I walk the site and make sure I can't find any night. Well, any there you go. You give them the offer. It's, you either use the yeah. biodegradable or you not remove cost, it. like they're not that much <laughs> different than price. Can I just say one other thing? Though? This is the argument you would have with someone who was didn't want to do burlap. Oh, good. I like arguing. And, and what will happen is over <laughs> the course of a couple of years, just as people getting trees cut, and tree vendors will hear, oh yeah, Menden wants you to leave a snag. 
people coming and doing projects in Menden will say, oh yeah, you better do a uh, grassy swale or you better have a vegetated, swale. Veget vegetated swale. You should pl plan on having a biodegradable water because otherwise they're going to chew you, chew you up about it. Can I just say one other thing too? And Isabella, I totally respect your opinion about us protecting the wetlands, but if you look at the definition of what the CONCOM does, is it protects our natural resources. Yes, habitat. Habitat, yeah, wildlife habitat, not wildlife. Right, but it's the same that, thing. But that's the way it's written. No, it's just the chicken before the egg or the egg before the chicken. Either way, we're protecting it. But so a wattle fence that is biodegradable protects our natural resources. But there, I mean, a wattle has a silt fence behind it. The silt fence has to come out, so the wattle will come with it. They're separate. And usually they get left. Yeah, I just. Waddle's just a, a 12 inch diameter. No, I know, but usually the waddle's up against the silt fence. Yeah, but the they ones don't that have taken. No, not, not always. You know, a lot of places off of one or the other. Because you stake in the waddles like you would a silt fence. It's and that just stops out. the silt from coming through. It's easy to go in and rip the plastic up off of the fence and leave the, leave the stake and right. leave the waddle in the ground. And the mm -hmm. problem is that. We've gone on site walks for old sites, and oh yeah, underneath there, there's we can see the. the we plastic. were at the solar fields. Yeah, they, they were they all did. over there. Was but I don't I don't think they have a certificate of compliance yet. The solar field does it. Yeah, that's so the they, other problem that people don't come back and close out their, their OOCs until decades later. So anyway, this is I would like to see construction companies i'd love everyone to do it but i think that at the grassroots level that's who's coming to us 90 percent of the time are are people doing developments and if we can somehow say it and, and anna's really good at this too because she makes sure there's green space and all that kind of stuff but like i think that it would be another dimension that we can explore as a con con and make okay. things better save the world a little bit okay a little bit maybe nullify some some of the effects of construction. So then I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how. If we amend the regulations, I don't know if that's just a, pu a public hearing or if it needs to go on town warrant. I don't know. I'm happy to do what what Carl said, as long as I have a little bit of backup when there's people here that come, oh, I will. come towards I us. I got sold on the, the biodegradable ones at the MACC fall conference. Bob and I were there and the guy had it out on display and I said, wow, that solves a problem. Is it more expensive? And he said, nah, it's not. My but, sense is a regulation. You're right. It doesn't need. It's not a bylaw change. It's, you know, how we do business. And so if this is the our recommended BNP list, that doesn't need to be go to a bylaw. That's so that's, so so my question is the work product that Leah has produced, does well, that need to be them. modified to remove specific company names? Well, from Leah, I just have I have pictures of different companies and products, and then I have a vegetated swales PDF from the state. And so it's what, the state's best practices for um, yeah, so I, so I, I that would be better than yeah, just for the state. Yeah, so, is the, okay. so is the state one sufficient? Yeah. Okay, so that's what we can. So when when we are when Isabella is in the process of reviewing an NOI, she could say, "Here's the best practices from the state that we will be expecting to have a response from you if you're not following it. Why you're not following it?" <laughs> I'm happy to. Cut out the names of the. I'll crop the pictures so that you can just show the products. Um, and it's and and what kind did they have at the MACC? They had both. They had the okay. the, um, the material and then the um, yeah the burlap the wrap and the burlap wrap. Yeah. Okay, got you. I mean, I don't care what they use. Just I. And you could even try to get one if you can get plastic wrap. You should be able to get some kind of. Um, hemp wrap something right like exactly that. well there's one in there that's an actual an actual material um those so um was, was there one site you could have referred them to so I right. didn't do that yeah try to make it easier but not be as explicit as these well things. but what i would expect would happen is they would we would say here is a link to the state best practices document and then if 
they needed more information, Leah would refer to her folder full of, well, there's this product and this product and this product. I'm not recommending any of them, but this is an example of what we expect to have. Same thing with seed mixes, like Ernst Conservation. Okay. Ernst Conservation, so those, we have the wetlands. So you keep those in your back pocket and they wouldn't go on the town website. Meadow blend. I already got them. Well, there's like a zillion different blends for whatever your, your what do you mean? situation is, yeah. Okay. Thank you guys for listening. It's you for trying to make the, the select board put you on here knowing that you would be raising this kind of issue for us mm -hmm. as opposed to the kind of things Lonnie would be would have been raising. I, I don't. I mean, oh, sorry. No, I forgot that. Let me let me finish my sentence. I made that quite clear when I made our. I, I instead of recommending one candidate over the other, I said, here are the strengths and weaknesses and here is what you can expect this person to be focusing on. And so they chose you. That's a, a set for you to, 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 to for you to be you. <laughs> okay, sorry. I'm easily distracted by plants. You guys are going to see that. Okay. That's what you're looking I don't for. Know right if yeah. On for yeah, that's one of the barrel lip ones. Excuse that's me? one of the ones I don't I know. Milford Street. Somebody's on. Oh. Okay. Can we help you? <laughs> Might be 51. Well, they're muted, so. Yeah, the burlap ones, and they're not any harder to install. It's the same. Yeah. Okay. Or is it is it you, Bob? Shouldn't be. Milford Street residence. Well, yeah, but I'm I'm fifty. <laughs> Who's yeah, your neighbor? It, it goes in there. Unless my wife is on. Cool. She's picking up on you. Right? <laughs> okay. Well, I didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we got some minutes to. Uh, no, agenda sorry. item number twist. Stop I'm trying to share the I'm meeting. Sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Agenda item number 12. Submit it. Uh, building <laughs> permits. Uh, Isabella, take it away. Uh, 134, it's on hold. And then 32 West Hill Dam, they wanted to build a garage. There weren't wetlands and it's on their lawn. Um, so that one got approved. And then 51 Milford Street, they're doing interior build out of a sprinkler installation. So that also doesn't really need to be reviewed by us. Okay. Uh, before we go to the minutes, some housekeeping. Uh, I met with the town administrator and HR, and we were discussing our request that Isabella get extra hours. So, your summary of that? Yeah, I'm, I'm temporarily approved for more hours. Um, yeah. Nice. So. So Temporarily. <laughs> he is now able to go up to, did we say 35 or 40? I thought we said 40. Well, no, it's what we they said at the meeting. Oh, got you. Sorry. We, that? we want her to work all the time. <laughs> yeah, there was there was some discussion about figuring out the nuances of the money and the budgeting. So, yeah, I'm, I'm up to 40. Jen was going to figure out how they were actually going to pay my bill, but I don't. Okay. They haven't updated me on this that. is a temporary extension until the end of the fiscal year. And the reason is because we didn't have anyone taking money out of this account the first half of the fiscal year. And when we go before FinCom, uh, we will be making a presentation at town meeting that she should be continuing at 40 hours a week or whatever. And uh, so we'll, that'll go for FinCon review and then see see how it proceeds from there. Uh, the other issue that was raised was uh, Isabella had accrued a number of hours of comp time. The consensus was that during those times when there's three weeks between meetings, you would be taking using up some of the comp time for that. Do you expect to be doing that during this next three week period? Or would that be going? No, I, yeah, I haven't, I haven't planned anything. But I like okay. to take a vacation at some point since I don't accrue vacation time, but okay. I don't know. I don't have plans to leave, but you know, I will. You know, yeah. Can you let us know just so we don't bother you and you can have a vacation? Yeah, I'd be closing the office for a week. Yeah, so, well, yeah. Let, let, let me know and I put your mail thing up and <laughs> do not disturb. Whatever it it work out that she'd refer stuff to me to to handle uh, that she, anything that came in in the concom that was needed to be acted on before she came back she'd forward to me and I'd handle it. 
OK, so now we can go on to review and approve minutes. So uh, first one. Minutes for February 8th, 2024. Uh, yeah. I will entertain a motion to approve. I will motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion or people want to amend the minutes? They look good to me. All in favor? Aye. Well, Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. Uh, next up, review the minutes for February. I was that correct? Or... February 9th, 2023. How did we have meetings one day apart? Can't be right. No, because one was 24, 24. Oh, you're a year apart. You're in a day. Oh, OK, so we just approved the one from OK last week. I mean, last, last week. Now we go back in time year. OK, 2023, February 9th. Thank you for putting my brain on straight. Uh, I'll take to a motion to approve. I wasn't here, so I'm abstaining. I'll make that motion. Second. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> no, no. Uh, any suggestion and any requests to amend the minutes? OK, uh, all in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed. That's as unanimously. Now we go back in time again for March 23rd, 2023. I hear a motion to approve. I'll move to approve the minutes of March 23rd, 23. Any any amendments to the minutes? Long time ago. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. So we're making progress. Yeah, we've we, 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 well, yeah, so I now have someone under me as well. Uh, and, and you have your very own minion. <laughs> I have a minion? I have this. Where do I get a minion? I have a senior worker. I need a minion. All right. Uh, I item, think of how fun that would be, right? If you had a minion. Agenda item 14, items not reasonably anticipated. Anyone have anything else to bring up? Yeah, I, I just wanted the MACC conference is next Saturday. I'm going to sign Susan up. I responded to you. You said you wanted to do the two fundamentals classes, but one of them, the second one, you said order of conditions, but it was um a different one. Oh, it's on. Oh, I don't know. I was just curious. The. One said it was there, and then the other one was kind of blank. So I'm not sure. Yeah. So the second one is um, I emailed it back to you. It was a different one on the second half. The order of conditions is the following Wednesday evening. Oh, I see. So I think you wanted to do the two that day. Yeah, but uh, I can make something else. Okay. Did anyone else want to go? I'm certified. I know, but there are other there classes. Are other yeah, it's not just the fundamentals classes. It's good networking. I, I took the, the OOC one back in September, which was. I know, but there's like there's like 16 different classes throughout the day. Oh, all right. I'll go take a look. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, like okay. Grass whales and LIT. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no it's, it's at the University of Holy Cross. So it's a conference oh, from 8 to 4 on Saturday. Yeah, but it's not virtual. So. No. We'll get the money. Virtual. Mm -hmm. There are some virtual options for the fundamentals classes, but the majority of the conference workshops are in person. No, the fundamentals are the 100s and the 200s, right? Yeah, so the fundamentals is getting home before midnight, how to run an effective meeting. And then plan review and site. <laughs> recommend anyone who wants to take over chairing take that one. <laughs> and then plan review and site procedures is the second half. But then there are all these other events happening throughout that you so you don't have to do the fundamentals classes for the conference. If I go home and I take a look at their this and there's something virtual that I can take, do I have to tell you or can I just sign up for it and pay for it? If you want me to pay for it, <laughs> then I think I don't, I'm paying for it because I'd rather see no, you get training. Out of budget, so if she you sign up and pay for it. You don't have to get reimbursed for it. Right. You send in a reimbursement and eventually 
Bob and I will submit for reimbursement as we get closer to the end of the year and we see how much training money we have. I mean, I'll take a look when I get home. Yeah, the the hybrid ones is successful grant writing, Riverfront Area, Indigenous Partners, and Natick's Atlantic White Cedar, and then Get Back Here, You Obnoxious Plant, a guide to adaptive oh, nice. species management. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that one's virtual? These are hybrid. these four are hybrid, yes. Okay, good. Oh, that yeah. might be a nice one. The wetland delineation was a good uh, class to take. Too. Yeah, so the, the rest of the fundamentals classes are occurring in the spring. So I'll be certified at the end of March nice. with all the classes. Uh, if you take the uh, effective meeting one, you'll you'll see all of the shortcuts and things that I've needed. Yeah, I'm thinking that one. How do we roll? Uh, how do I do lots of things that aren't strict Robert's rules? Oh, nice. Like that. Okay, I'm going to have to look. So we have two. Okay. Ones for Specifically for Oh well, yeah. And then the one for other well, wetland plants. And identifying them. All right. Okay. Any other items not Carl, we don't want you not to be the chair. So I don't think anyone should take I'm that. I'm eventually class. going to move on to yeah, that, no. <laughs> bigger and better town governments. <laughs> You're not going for the planning board, are you? I you can't. You'd have to give one up. Right, exactly. That's my point. <laughs> I, I, I am not going to talk about my political action. Yeah, that's right. That's, All right. I'm, I'm, not, I am saying that any good manager chair has to groom a succession. Plan. There you go. So I'm saying take this and so you can start running your own effective meeting. There you go. All right. Uh, any Anything else? Uh, if not, we will have that most blessed of all motions. The Dickinson is. I make a motion that we adjourn. Is there a second? Back in. All in favor. Aye, aye. Okay. Now stop the recording and I can start smoozing politics.